Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day nine for the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me in Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Uh, I've been doing Advent of Code. Let me know in the comments if you've been doing Advent of Code. I've, uh, this has been a tough year. I feel like in the past, um, you know, in the past, I've been uh, able to get top 100 when I try, but um, well, like once in a yeah. Once in a while, but uh, but it feels like the last couple or this week I've just been blown away. Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe it's something, but uh, eh, but uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's take a look at today's farm. We have thirty-one fifty-two special way two. Okay, and the way is consists special of every pair of adjacent elements contains contains two numbers of different parity. Okay, you're given an array of integer numbers and a two D integer matrix queries with four queries. Duh, duh, duh. You want to check whether that's sub array special or not. Okay. What is a special? Okay, so an array is special if every pair of its adjacent pair contains two numbers of different parity. Okay, well, first of all, I guess, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fine. I think there are a couple of ways to think about it. I think the way that. I immediately gravitate to it as some sort of prefix sum, so we could do the queries relatively easily. Um, there are a couple of other ways that you can think about it, though. There's some like divide and conquer things. Um, you could even kind of do it with a segment tree if you want, which is kind of maybe a fun way of practicing segment tree uh, if you're into that. Um, but you can also kind of think about it as segment line segments or overlapping segments because the nums. Um, it's a, almost like a, a longest subway kind of thing, right? Um, or not, well, not longest, but like, like for this query zero to four, or maybe another example, like there's a query from two to three. If you have the longest going from zero to ten, then two to three is going to be true, right? So something like that, where, um, yeah. So as long as you're wholly within the longest things, then that's going to be true. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think there are a lot of different ways of thinking about it. I think they're, they're all kind of fine. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know which way I, I prefer. I'm just thinking through which way is... Uh, I'm definitely not doing segment tree, but I mean, <laughs> besides that. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to do it like a little bit like sliding window by pre-processing the query. I think this is a technique that comes up from time to time. Um, the thing that uh, you think about queries is that you want to... Oh, find some ketchup. Uh, you want some... You think you want to do the queries online, but they don't have to be online if they're given to you or at once. You could still do them offline. And here maybe I would write something like... Um, let me play around with this idea, right? For SE, for beginning and in queries, we maybe want to say, um, yeah, maybe we want to say like, um, like just some sort of defense, right? We can just say defense. We have a default, uh, which makes it a dictionary of lists, and you have a defense at S. Um, we want to say, uh, okay, maybe we want to do. Well, we have to keep track of the index anyway, so maybe index of the query and defense of n, we want to append index of the query as well, but actually maybe with like a, with a type thing. I always write plus one minus one to go like in and out as a way, but you know, obviously if you, you can also use like a enum or something like this, um, right? So like now we have defense and then now we can process the uh, query, uh, the, the, or the, sorry, now we can process the numbers, so then now you're kind of doing it in reverse, right? And then there are some things, like I said, um, yeah, you're trying to figure out, okay, from the streak, right? So maybe we have a, uh, do, 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 right? <clears throat> oh, yeah, so actually we want to do n minus 1 because we have to con um, go from i and i plus 1, right? So basically, what do we want to do? Um, huh, okay, so you fence up I, it's going to be the process that we look at, right? So, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Right, so then now for um, QI for Q index and type in defense, right? So if type is equal to one, then that means that we have a new thing, right? So uh, yeah. Mm, well, actually, maybe I'll write it this way, right? Um, this is a little bit tricky, I, I, honestly, but that's why I'm kind of slowing it down a little bit. But you have to, what I'm going through in my mind are all the, what I call invariants, right? And invariants, I know that it's like a, a term that might not mean anything, or uh, it may mean a lot, or maybe not a lot, depending on your level of progression. But I just mean that things that we always want to hold true um, at the end of certain uh, statements or loop or whatever so that um, we can figure out uh, what to do, right? And here, so basically there are only two, f well, okay. And, the, and in my head, I'm trying to like juggle all the, pos uh, all the different uh, possibilities, but basically you have something like, okay, if this is the case, maybe you have a, a, um, a current set, we want to add, the index to it, and then else uh, we want to remove the index from it, right? Um, yeah. Well, but or at least if you, we we move it, well, we have to see that if QI is in current, then we remove it, right? Um, but in this case, we actually also want to return the answer of the queries. We want to say uh, force for all of these for now. But if this is already in current, then that means that we well first we can remove it, but also we want to set KI to true, right? Because that means that the entire thing we sign in one thing. And what I mean by that is that, okay, this processes the queries, right? Which is fine. But then after that, now we actually do the thing about uh, the parity, right? So if, it's kind of tricky when you do adjacent things because you, uh, um, you have to think of when you want to process things, right? Um, and that's, I think, the trouble I have. And I think I actually want to start this at one, right? Because then now, um, we, we can actually do the invariant a little bit better, is that then now we go, okay, if um, if num sub i mod 2 is not equal to num sub i minus 1 mod 2, right? That means the, uh, if it's equal to, sorry, then the parity has, is the same, then that means that we start a new streak at i, right? This means that we start a new streak at i, and that means that everything in current will be um, uh, reset it because that's just, you know, because now everything that was, if you're in current, that means that your query spans to different, uh, what I call streak or line segment or whatever, right? So that's really the only thing that's different. And yeah, and of course you have to start with I, but also you have to start, uh, that means that you have to process I is equal to zero because you don't have this. So that means that current is equal to set, but the only thing that's a little bit thing that you have to do is that you have to process the query for i um, i is equal to zero, right? As we said, um, and then it's a little bit awkward, but yeah. And you actually also need this because you can't have two things where it is in the same index. Uh, if it's in one index, I think it's trivially true. So I, I just kind of write it this way, um, even though it looks very awkward. And I think that's basically the idea. Um, yeah, I probably did this like a different way. Maybe this could, I didn't even look at the constraints actually, because what I wrote is like n times, or yeah, n plus q, sorry, right? So uh, uh, I'm probably, I don't, oh, this was only six months ago. I don't even remember it. This is like a contest problem or is a number? Huh, do we want five, two? Maybe I did it during the contest. But yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of different ways to think about it. Uh, oh, I did it with binary search. Uh, with oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense the way I did it last time too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was kind of that was kind of the idea. It's a similar idea with prefix sum, except for that you know where the breakage is, right? Um, it's kind of the same idea here as well, right? Uh, but we can go over. Well, I'll go over this solution first, and then maybe we will go over the previous one. But that's pretty much it, right? Um, the idea is that. Yeah, when you start a new streak, current contains the start. So maybe to be more precise, current contains the starting ends of queries, right? So then now, if if you have ending here, that's this part. If you end here, that means that every everything inside the query is in, within one streak. 
if that makes sense. And that's kind of how I did this one. Um, and of course, you have to kind of handle the zero case, even though this looks really awkward. Um, but it is specifically for handling an edge case. And then, yeah, in this case, um, we have more explicitly if this, there's a break here. That means that, um, well, another way to think about it is that for each query, if there's nothing breaking in the middle, then these would have the same index because they belong to the same break on the same side of break. And that's basically it. Um, I guess I did this during the contest. Um, I, I wonder how fast I did this, honestly. Let me see. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Because that this way is probably cleaner than the way I do. I actually didn't think about it this way um, today. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I didn't do this during the contest. Or maybe that, that, that was during a virtual contest or something. I don't know. But um, either way, I mean, yeah. And the, like I said, this is going to be N plus Q, right? Because this is uh, Q, O of Q. This is, well, this is just a... Uh, uh, yeah, also part of O of Q, but yeah, this is O of N. Uh, I mean, I know that there's a, a for loop here, but keeping in mind that F, the summation of all the events is O of Q, two times Q, one for the beginning, one for the end. So this is um, N plus Q in total. Um, I don't know that this is probably the recommended way of doing it, but I just want I did. Uh, I mean, I did have a couple of ideas in my head as I was saying. Like another one is prefix sum. Um, I guess the other other, um, and you could kind of. Um, have this idea of prefix sum so that you can make prefix sum queries, kind of, right? Um, and there are a couple of ways you could ref you, you could phrase that prefix sum. You could you could just kind of streak, and then you could kind of see, um, uh, or like not even streak, just like uh, uh, if you if you do it as like uh, um, if you if you return like one if there are diff if the the different parity or something like that, and then you can prefix sum over it, then the length of your query, it corresponds to the length of the prefix sum or something like this, right? So I mean, I, I know that I'm not super detailed, but hopefully that gives you an idea to kind of play around with. Another one, of course, is what I did with the binary search. Another one, another one is um, playing around with um, this idea of segment tree. I think that's actually kind of, uh, uh, this is could be a fun idea to, to if you are learning about segment tree. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's fast enough for lead code, but it is, like, you can write code that is correct, right? Because lead code sometimes just silly with running times, but, but yeah. Um, that is all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for, oh, excuse me. Thanks for watching. Stay good. Stay healthy. Take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.